You are now tuned in to the Cosmic Combos Podcast, your number one source for accurate, relevant, and thought-provoking astrological conversations in the podcast nation, the place where stars and minds align. Peace, you're now tuned into the Cosmic Convos Podcast. I'm your humble host, Herut, and we got the man of the hour, the good brother, Brother Ra. How you doing? Oh, brother, excellent, excellent. How about yourself? Hey, man, same here, same here, man. Just, you know, learn something new every day, you know, staying driven, staying busy, you know, trying to, uh, you know, take it to the next level. Indeed, indeed, just staying at peace, my friend. Taking it a day at a time, being in the now. That's about it. Good deal, good deal. Well, you know, before we get too far, I want to remind you all that this episode was brought to you by Push It Forward Media Group and Calaprusha Astrology. And our good partners, our good friends, our supporters over on Patreon. Big shout out to the patrons out there. Um, definitely, you know, love and appreciate the support. And if you haven't already, um, go ahead and hit us up on Patreon. You know, we uh, we uh, answer a lot of questions, a lot of which we don't even air. So uh, definitely get at us there. And, um, you know, you can find Push It Forward Media Group at pushitforward.com. That's P-U-S-H-I-T-F-W-D dot com. Um, you can um, follow us on Instagram, you know, spelled the same way at Push It Forward. And then, of course, hit us up, Cosmic Convos at C-O-S-M-I-C-C-O-N-V-O, Cosmic Convo on Instagram. There, you know, that's where you see, you know, you can stay in tune with different updates on the podcast. And you can, you know, um, hit the link tree in the profile. And Brother Rod, tell them how they can, um, you know, get in touch with you in Calaprusha. Uh, the people can definitely holler at me uh, via Facebook or IG. Uh, tag is Shechem Ra. So just uh, type in uh, my name and you'll definitely find me. The only one with that uh, specific name. And then also, you can hit me up uh, via Kalaparusha Astrology at gmail.com. So uh, either one of those definitely get at me. Indeed, indeed. So yeah, the, the last episode did pretty well. You know, um, podcast has been, you know, um, steadily growing, you know, we knew that from the onset, right? And, um, yeah, we got pretty good feedback. I even seen someone say that this was the best episode thus far. It's their favorite episode. What you think about that? Wow. Now that's something. Wow, that's something. That's something. You know, I just do them and keep it pushing. So I appreciate that. Um, we appreciate the feedback. And, um, you know, honestly, my gratification is hearing that, uh, one of my, in fact, um, one of the podcast listeners is now, uh, now slash student um, was saying that these podcasts are kind of like classes and they, people take notes. So by all means, please do. Um, that's the intent is so that you have material that you can use, um, tidbits, you know, little things that you can go uh, play with and try out and see for yourself. And then you come back and show that, you know, the information is is sound and, and, and correct. So by all means, you know, use it for that. I do kind of present things in a format in that way. So I take advantage because uh, it's, it's for free. Indeed. Indeed. And, you know, um, the good thing about this podcast format is that we can, you know, address these topics in a kind of, you know, um, you know, informal type manner. And, you know, we we can talk about it in a way without getting too deep into the details. And, you know, as you listen and you listen and, you know, the different terms and, you know, all the different concepts, you know, you may not understand them, but they they they're like seeds. They start dropping in there like seeds. And then when you actually start studying the science, 
you know, it just activates, and you know, and you start remembering all the different things that you've been hearing, you know, um, on the podcast and everything like that, and it just kind of puts it all together. Indeed, indeed, it happens that way. It happens that way. Um, yeah, so definitely appreciate the feedback, though. You know, keep it coming. You know, keep it coming. Indeed, indeed. So before before we get rolling, um, you want to answer a Patreon question? Let's do it. All right. So what our good brother um, asks is, I have Saturn in K2 and Gemini Migashira. Rahu just moved over this point in my chart to second house. While I'm in my Saturn cycle, Shani Sarisati, what event could be triggered in your understanding and what and he also mentioned that he's in the saturn mars mercury dasha so basically what he's asking is you know what happens when your you have a the nodes placed in a reverse position relative to your natal natal positions of the nodes like yeah, yeah the, the robos and then um specifically in the second eighth house axis so let me make sure i'm understanding this correctly because if i read it properly he's saying he has rahu in rigashira and of course this would actually be in gemini right it's in the gemini it's in this rigashira is we're talking about the gemini portion am i correct because so yeah, he has Saturn and K two and Migashira in the birth chart. Aha! Thank you for clarifying. So K yeah. two is in Migashira, and we have Rahu in uh, in uh, yeah. Sag, right? Yeah. Because right, K two Rahu K the Sag Gemini axis. Okay, got it. So now we're talking about Rahu is about to connect with. K2 and some and vice versa, K2 is about to connect with Raw in the 2 8 axis, right? Okay, second house, eighth house. When I say 2 8 axis, folks, 1 7, 2 8, 3 9, 4 10, 5 11, 6 12. Those are all the axes of the houses. Real down and dirty and quick. So, right, knowing the 2 8 axis, right, number one, right, because look at the general disposition of a person's chart in the first place. And Rahu in the eighth house, K2 in the second. Rahu in the eighth, K2 in the second obviously has someone that has a rough upbringing, right? Challenging childhood to some degree, right? And so this person then seeks, right? Not necessarily escape, but finds themselves to have the ability to go into things because they literally in that time frame become experts and masters in becoming isolated, right? And to themselves, right? And so they can go into research mode, right? Because the eighth house is that, it's kind of like a black hole, it's this funnel, it kind of sucks you in. And Rahu's there, so he's that part of us. It's that part of us all that literally is like the reptilian complex. Complex it is the part that is going to go for it no matter what. It is relentless. It is Im impetuously going to get something done, wherever that, whatever that area is. It's insatiable, right? So the eighth house being the house of occult knowledge, tumultuous things, right? This person grew up at the same time, probably uh, belonging to something of an unsavory nature in the street elements of things, right? But eventually, right, whatever, whatever happened, obviously they're in astrology, so they found some way to come to some knowledge of self. But Rahu in the eighth house would be indicative of that because that person has the insatiable desire to uncover hidden truths and has a love of secret knowledge. Right? Rahu, K2, K2, Rahu, any one of those two in that axis always produces this effect. Rahu more in the sense that it comes at a cost, meaning they have to go through tumultuous things, and then they get it after they get older. And then K2 is usually, it becomes innate. It's from a past life, right? So they get it kind of early on, but at the same time, they have an issue with other things going on in the 8th house. So kind of like, it's two sides of the same coin. But with Rahu being there and now K2 entering into that zone, there's a definite switching up because this person now is becoming more consumed into that area and doesn't even want to deal with matters that are external like mundane matters they don't want to deal with that stuff mundane reality sucks 
right? So they're most for the most part into spiritually stuff wholeheartedly because this now has created this switch, right? This kind of internalization, right? Because it's internal, but it's external at the same time. So it goes out to find the knowledge, but then also go, comes in and it keep coming. It keeps coming in and out of this knowledge type high, right? It gets, you know, Rahu is a high. Most people don't know that. It's a high. It's a high and a what? Drop off. Right? Because Rahu literally is the part of the serpent that was cut. So whenever he puts food in his mouth, he can't taste He can taste it, but he can't consume it. So he's consuming, this person consuming knowledge, consuming knowledge, consuming knowledge, consuming knowledge. And K2's there like, yeah, like, yeah. Matter of fact, don't nothing even, nothing even matter. So then you become self-consumed in this area. Right? And then what happens is, not only that, but the money aspect, the second house, right? It doesn't necessarily suffer, but this is the zone that you're focusing, that money and knowledge. And then it cuts off everybody else. It can destroy many times healthy relationships because you become so self-isolated, so, so insulated. So that's some of the things that you would notice with that. It's a very spiritual position in regards to that it's, so, it's transforming because of the eighth house exchange. Right? So I hope that kind of elucidates it. Like right? this person, the listener is probably going through a lot of epiphanies, a lot of sudden moments, right? Like out of nowhere stuff, right? And I mean, for real, like seriously, to the point where it's uncanny. It's like, is this really happening, right? In the second eighth house access, this is real. I have a second eighth. Am I Rahu K two's in the second eighth, uh, two eight access? So I know, right? First hand, right. so um, definitely, yeah. Be expecting those things to be very spiritually oriented, uh, extremely focused on uh, resources, and extremely focused on self knowledge. And between the two, these things kind of funnel with each other because one serpent's tail is in the other's mouth. So this two eight thing is kind of serving itself, self serving and self replicating. So knowledge, money, money, knowledge, right? And then they kind of exchange. And then at some point. It, that 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 pressure, right, of that uh, Rahu K two, right, gives a person new experiences with regards to different directions in spirituality and knowledge as well. So expect that as well. All right, indeed, indeed, indeed. So hope hopefully, you know that uh, that answered the question for you, um, you know, pretty well. And again, always, always thankful for these questions you know because sometimes it you know brings in stuff that you know we may not even be thinking about at the time so um definitely appreciate that question brother um you know but um indeed you know we, we start you know moving into um today's subject i did and it's, i guess it's kind of related you know um just wanted to ask your uh opinion on this i mean what <laughs> What's your thoughts on this whole Space Force thing? The uh, the U.S. Space Force launching the military arm of the <laughs> of uh, I don't know who's a fighting uh, space uh, yet, but space. maybe they're telling us something before they tell us. You know what I mean? Like maybe they're preparing for something that they kind of maybe already anticipate. I don't know. I mean, you know, here's the thing. You know the way things are right now. So uh, uh, I don't even know the word for it. You know. First of all, the person I don't and I don't even know if this is correct or not. F correct me if I'm wrong, folks, because I'm always up for correction. Um, the first time I heard it was through Trump, and I'm not uh, against or for any politician at all because it's all set up in in the first place. But he, except local local elections are a little different. But the big stuff, yeah, that's smoke and mirrors. Um, so, <laughs> the first time I heard it was from Donald Trump. I, I mean, and this like is just my personal kind of little way I'm looking at it. But uh, and then the recent, the recently released this kind of footage, and it really is not. Re it's not a recent release. This has been around. Um, information was there a couple years ago when they actually really released the other uh, video footage of this the, the UFO or whatever. But. Um, Mm, you know, it's interesting because I don't see where we could be, where it could serve a purpose. I mean, I guess 
Maybe if you have war in space with other countries, that could be a contingent way to use it. But other than that, well, I, I think it's, I think honestly, I mean, and here's the reality, man. This country spends more militarily speaking than any nation, all the nations combined. Yeah. And it's just, to me, another way to kind of put energy and effort into something that really for all intents and purposes won't serve us for any real you know it's, it's not it's not going to help the people and i that's what mm -hmm. that's what i'm talking about is build an institution build a force that can help the people you know build an employment force not you know <laughs> i mean real employment force not the ones they have or the stuff out there have out here now like build a force that can um you know help battered women or you know it's just so many things that we could do to internally make the quality of life better and then we externalize with these ideas that are i mean i don't even understand we but people in general i mean it's just crazy to me how the human mind works backwards yeah <laughs> like, were you gonna <laughs> fight in space i didn't know we had war in space but okay you know go for it you know it's interesting also it's innovative you know what i mean i look at it from another but not just from um, uh, a cynical perspective, but you know, it is definitely something to consider with the advancement of technology, because it is something that we can see. Hey, you know, we're moving in a direction, and we're, you know, getting ready. I mean, and I would foresee we're going to be in Mars pretty soon. Here, I mean, this is the next stop, right? So that's coming. Elon Musk has gone crazy, right? I mean, he's got a whole <laughs> future of plan right but you know well, he's like, not the only one um what's his name um from Am uh, um bezos he, his whole you know <laughs> they, there's an observation that people have you know noticed about him is that as the years go on he looks um increasingly more like um what's his name from star wars and he's doing that on purpose Spock. Star, uh, st st um, yeah like from from um star trek he's doing that's like yeah, that's that, that that's what he's trying to do. That's what they say. He, his his whole drive behind making the money that he's making is to you know fulfill this Star Trek kind of uh, wow. you know wow, that's heavy. fantasy that he has. He's trying to have enough money to be able to you know <laughs> explore that. Okay, well that's interesting. I did not know that, man. Um, yeah, it's whole it's art. It's a, a legitimate articles about it. it it's a real thing. <laughs> yeah, that, like I said, you know, this is a crazy. It's this this world, man, is inside out. <laughs> it really is. I mean, that's the best way you could say it. It's it's inside out. It's reversed. Yeah. You know, like when you're walking down the street, and you see your tag hanging out. That's the normal now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the no, the abnormal is to wear your shirt normally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just you know, it's name of the game, song of the times, but um. That's very interesting. You know, I mean, the the Space Force itself, I like to see what, it, innovatively speaking, like techno te uh, technologically speaking, what it can do. But well, that's the, that's the main thing the military does anyway, though. You know, they, they come and they research, research, drop new technology, and then eventually it becomes a consumer product. Exactly. That's true. That's what the Internet was. Yeah. That's, what mm -hmm. the, that's all the Internet was. It was already available uh, militarily in the 80s. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, no doubt, but you know we'll we'll, we'll we'll keep an eye out and see what happens. Uh, Kate Rahu's in Gemini. Uh, K two's in Sag. Makes sense. Perfect timing. Neptune is in uh, Aquarius. Aquarius is technology, right? And Neptune is kind of like kind of a Piscean type energy. So um, it's expansive. It's um, far reaching. And Aquarius is nothing but technology, um, far reaching, um, deep sciences, right? Uh, which is what Aquarius is, so you're definitely going to see a lot of that. I mean, and this, this, in fact, let's let's we can get right on into the show. I kind of using this as a segue. Yeah. Because um, today's show is really based on the trans trans Saturnian planets, or the outer planets, as they say, right? And the outer planets yeah. in consideration of Jotish, because this is what is being discussed on the show, um, is. Uh, is Jyotish or sidereal astrology with a Vedic background from uh, in it or with a Vedic background? So, nonetheless, right? We don't typically use the outer planets, right? And outer outer meaning Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. And 
um, for good reason, right? For good reason. And I'm not here to shoot anybody down about their techniques or their practice, because some of some of the astrologers that are supposedly practicing Jyotish use the other planets in a personal interpretation. And we'll talk about that a little later and what that means, but, you know, to each his own. Um, but considering, right, these trans-Saturnian planets uh, were recently discovered. Now, I know there's a lot of conjecture and argument and even maybe some proof. I mean, not maybe. There is some proof. There's a lot of proof that um, the ancients did have some knowledge on uh, the plant that were the planets that were outside of Saturn's um, 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 orbit, they knew, right? And we'll talk about that too. Well, but just getting back on the topic about what well they, go they had to be. I mean, because if if the you know if the Dogons can see <laughs> Sirius B, mm -hmm. I mean you know they're not seeing it with it's more of a you know uh, not the naked actual projection yeah. yeah you know type of thing but uh, uh, they had to know about those other planets. I mean you can <laughs> well, you shoot they, all they the way past there yeah and yeah. they're not it, it, <laughs> and here's the thing they probably know more than that considering yeah you know what I mean and for all intents and purposes because that's on a level where um, you and I would like to be right mm -hmm. But there's a cost to be the boss too, right? <laughs> so yeah, it definitely. Careful you know, what you ask for. Exactly. Um, <laughs> so you know, considering right, the ancients, they had some knowledge, right? It wasn't that it was not that they didn't know. They understood what was necessarily a plaque app applicable, right? In the general sense, in the in the sense where man is concerned, and I say man on a day to day basis, right? Meaning that Saturn, inner planets from the Sun to Saturn, including Rahu and K2, which total nine, are more than suffice to adequately describe man's level of consciousness and his is um, the height of which he's reached. For, I'm talking about the masses, right? Not those exceptions when we talk about sages or gurus, right? Those are those are exceptions to the rule, but for the masses, right? Right. The, the energy is not going to go past that 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 throat chakra, right? The five lower senses, right? And so, understanding that, right? Then Saturn becomes right, kind of like that ring past knot. In fact, that's why it has rings, right? Because you can't go beyond that with regards to your average everyday with your average everyday consciousness. You stop there, and for good reason. You don't need anything other than that. Master the inner world so first. Then try to expand from there. Then try to go and move outward into deeper levels of understanding. But you have to go and master the inner realm first. And the inner realm is those base chakras, right? Plus the upper, right? Um, third eye and the Sahasra are the, the crown chakra, right? So. And that's seven, right? Totaling seven. Of course, there are more chakras, right? We know that. But I'm talking about base seven as a, as a number that's universal. Seven days of the week, seven planets, seven base colors, right? Yeah. So, <clears throat> understanding that, we also have to understand consciousness and how it works, okay? Um, let's talk about a little little bit about history, right? For the most part, and, and this is in many different countries of the world, not just European, but African too, right? Asian too, just the world period. You know, three, four hundred years ago, five hundred years ago, to live to be 89 years old was unheard of. Unheard of. You died at like 40. 40 was old. Right? And so... I mean, there are, and people did live long. I'm not going to say they didn't live long. I'm saying the average was very, the, the lifespan, was, lifespan was shorter just for the, because of the quality of living, right? It's just changed, right? Yeah. We have more centurions now than ever in history. So understanding that, that just kind of like 
thinking about this, right? The old man was 40 and 50. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, now, in my lifetime, I noticed that. Right. I, I remember, like, when, people, when I was a kid, people who were 30 look mm-hmm. older than what you they know, do now, right? I look now at yeah. 30. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Older, grown was grown, right? Yeah. <laughs> right? Grown's not grown anymore. It's changed, right? But even still, right? Three, four hundred years ago and back, going thousands of years, people didn't live long like that, on average. Right? Mm-hmm. So, if you take that into consideration, I mean, just think about that for a second. And, and think about it like this. I mean, man lives more longer than most creatures, except, you know, elephants and turtles. Yeah. Most creatures don't live as long as man. And just to, in man's lowest physical health, like his worst physical health, like we live longer. So, that alone shows that the age, right? And I'm talking about as we've gone, grown, we've increased in age, right? But just because we increase in age doesn't increase in wisdom, right? Something's missing there. So showing that still, even though you've gotten older, you still have an infantile mentality. So you're still under that seven. Does it make sense? You're not. You haven't broken that band yet, right? Yeah. So. Taking that into consideration, and they people say you usually die old. Most people die old fools, right? In fact, uh, in African names, right? In their um, or Wahimadu, right? Uh, breaks down clearly, right, and elegantly that you know some people are what we call sahu to the point where you become old. You're an old child. Most people never develop their higher centers, so. Since we know that, right, and we can establish that the seven planets can adequately deal with those types of levels of consciousness and issues and challenges and karma, right, the extra outer Saturnian planets really serve no direct purpose in the sense of reading a man's destiny on a, on a, on a, on a regular level. But, right, they are there, right, and they do serve a very specific purpose even in what we call Jataka or uh, Nail Astrology. Yeah. So, <clears throat> man's consciousness, right, only lasts for 100, and, in this body, right, we can exist 120 years. Yeah. I mean, that's not long. It really is not enough time to really master the other levels of consciousness in that you transcend, right, the material world. Think about it. After a, if you could live 120 years, if we could live 120 years plus, let's say, 70 years, right, and that was like the advanced person and the everybody else kind of was up to 120 Right? You would have to let go of everybody that you know. Twice. Mm-hmm. Did you hear me? Yeah, <laughs> Twice. Right? So you'd have to literally detach yourself from people dying twice. Like two times. Right? Let's say you get let's say you're 120 and we're gonna throw you sixty sixty more years, forty more years. And you get married again. And then you have someone die on you again. Right? You get close to people, they die on you too. Because they're not going to live your age. To be your age. So now you know, you're going to have to detach. The higher, the octaves, those, those planets are higher octaves, right? Meaning that you have to be beyond this material plane to even understand what the relevance are, what the relevance would be on a personal level. Because you'd have to experience it, right? Yeah. Think about it like this, right? Let's talk about it. So let's get into some of the planets. Let's talk about the planets. First of all, um, they were recently discovered. Uranus is discovered recently in nineteen in seventeen eighty one, right? Neptune in 80, 1846 and Pluto in nineteen thirty. I won't get into the specifics of how they were found and who found them and right. And it is interesting 
the research when you find it, look at the planets and kind of understand how they came about, the naming process, all those things. It's interesting. But like for the sake of time, we don't need that here. But I do yeah. recommend, you know, looking into it and finding out. Because um, it, it's interesting because the concept of the planets themselves do kind of fit in with the way they came about. Right. But, right, if you can't exist past 120 years, right, you can only master Saturn. And possibly, I didn't say master, but maybe understand Uranus. Okay. Uranus takes 84 years to make one. It's the seventh, first of all, Uranus is the seventh planet from the sun. It takes 84 years to make one complete solar return, meaning to its original position it was 365 days before, oh, not 365 days <laughs> um, hmm. uh, 84 years before right yeah so we can we can get 84 years right at least once right we, we can get around there but you know they say what do they say what's the old saying you've been around the block of what a few times <laughs> a few times right? few times yeah <laughs> right because you've been around a block once, eh, you kind of, you're, ex you're exposed, right? But you got to go around again, right, to really understand. It. And then you go around again, right, to, 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 to yeah, I got, some, I got this. Well, you can do that with Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, all of them. Can't do that with Uranus. Not in this present form. Yeah. Right? So considering that, Uranus is outside of your mastery. And people can say, well, that doesn't matter. Absolutely, it matters. Because you can't get into a groove. You can't, that's what mastery is. You know, when you master something, you're in a groove. You can ride it. Saturn, you can do that. Hey, I'm a second Saturn return. I know it's first Saturn return. Shh, man, look, I lost my grandma. I lost my mama. And da 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 da. I had to grow up. I had all these responsibilities, right? This time, second Saturn return, you, 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 if you were wise, you wised up and you're planning for retirement. That's your second Saturn return. You're planning for it. You're not about to do it. So you learn lessons, right? And that means yeah. that you you're around the block. You've been around the block enough, right? Then Saturn's third return comes. Yeah, you're gonna experience that if you've lived long enough. And then you can say, yeah, now three times, right? That's it. But you can say, yeah, and when someone comes to someone of that age, they can say, yeah. And here's the thing. The chart is based, you know, the chart is like the snapshot. It's not just a snapshot. The snapshot is purposefully done so that you can understand how those planets impinge on each other as things move. That's the purpose of the chart, not just to snapshot it to say this is what you are. It's this is how you unfold. Yeah. Right. So understanding that if you're unfolding and you can't unfold but one time within this particular ring, past not or this particular uh, energy you can't you can't get any further than you're, you're stuck so those people that meditate those people that do um, serious sadhana, uh, sadhana serious spiritual work constantly doing I mean they live it 24 7 and in the West it's very difficult because we have bills and things that we need to take care of so you're not gonna you're not gonna find too many people like that here you gotta go yeah. to other countries where they're in the cut Right, where they're not even worried about a bill. They're vibrating, and that's, this is what I'm saying, that we, 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 we take things for granted. Like these people that are on those higher octaves, those higher planes, those higher octaves of thought, they're not, they, what, they've already left the materialism behind, haven't they? Yeah. You see how it, it works, it correlates perfectly. Pluto, well, let's see. Neptune takes 164 years, to, almost 165, to make a full, complete solar return. One. <laughs> One. <laughs> right. So we're talking three. That's, <laughs> I mean, we're in 500 mm. years. Oh, to master yes. this. So you have to let go of the physical plane in order to do that. You can't even be part of this. You literally, you'd have to be in the world, but not, like literally, you're physically here, but you're, you're you're elevating so far beyond, 
right? Those and those, and that's when you literally can come to people that are on that level, and they can explain and say things without astrology because they're already at the level of consciousness that can see everything. Yeah. Yeah. Then what use would the outer planets be anyway? I mean, they're at they're beyond it. So it's it's, it's a catch twenty two for man. It's like a lockdown, right? <laughs> Unless you go past the materialism uh, uh, of this world, you can never experience those higher levels of knowledge and see into the future without the aid, without the aid of tools like astrology and um, oracles and things like that. Because some of those people can. They're literally walking, living, talking oracles. Yeah. So understanding these things, this is why we don't use the outer planets, right? Because it just doesn't necessarily really pan out to be of significance in the sense of man's destiny and what he's here and, and intended to do. The seven planets plus Rahu and Rahu K2 do just fine. In fact, they do everything that Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto will do. Everything. Right? So you don't even really have to go there. But let's go there. Let's go there. So Uranus right, takes 84 years to transit to seventh planet from the sun right it's the third largest body wise right in the solar system so it's fairly large and the reason why I bring this up is because um, this is a good time to kind of show and prove that they know that astrology works there's a term that you can look up called pertur uh, perturbations p-e-r-t-u-r-b-a-t-i-o-n-s perturbations and perturbations are basically when a planet moves, right? It, it's in the, remember, space is a medium, first of all, right? So all this is like when I say medium, it's, it's, it's vast space. It's, 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 it's not empty space. It's a medium. That's why they can, like, the planets are there, right? And they're in this, this on this plane, and the sun's gravity keeps them in place, but it's in a medium. Yeah. Right? So that medium, right, it, it, it has, uh, uh, it's nothing separate in this medium. Just like when you put something in uh, a tub of water, right, and you push on one side and you, you, know, you push maybe like uh, your kid's toy or something like on that side, the other side goes up, right? And then when that side goes down, just like just like any, it's just like liquid. It's the water, right? It's basically space is like it's, it's like water. It, it's fluid, right? Not to say just like, but in the general sense of the word, in the general concept of it. So when these planets, their gravitational pulls, pushes, right, speeds, all affect one another. They, it affects the next planet, the planet next to it. It affects the planet next to it, and then so forth. So it's almost like they're on a, they're like, um, it's like an orchestra, right? Yeah. One note will affect the other notes. In fact, the spheres of the mu, uh, the music of spheres is a lot of um, uh, Pythagoras, right? He was into um, understanding from that perspective. So when you uh, when you you get it, it's like oh now I see that these perturbations affect everything else that are around us. So Earth gets these perturbations right even though and remember this is something that's been happening over four billion years so it's like a fine-tuned instrument one small perturbation is enough to do the things that it would need to do as far as astrologically speaking it doesn't need much because it's a fine-tuned instrument you know swiss watches like those you know those rollies and all those watches those are fine-tuned instruments that's why that's why they're that's why they're valued. Yeah. The more expensive, the more fine tuned it is. Right. So this you this solar system we're in is like a fine tuned clock. One small perturbation on this will affect this, 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 and this. And just they just don't have the mathematical knowledge to calculate it. But that's what astrology is. It's the mathematical knowledge of the perturbations of the planets and how they affect the things here on Earth. Yeah. So we can prove that astrology works. I mean, the Milankovitch cycles, which proves that Jupiter and Saturn pull and tug on each other, and that creates a 100,000 year cycle, which basically is responsible for the ice ages. That is proven. 
and those are based on perturbations. So again, that's just to show astrology is real, y'all. Don't bleed a hype like like Neil deGrasse and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> the, it, well, I mean, it, it, it's you know, we we know that. I mean, like is is that you know, even a woman's cycle is impacted by the cycles of the moon sometimes. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Right? And so just that alone, you know what I mean? The oceans, you can't measure the tides. Can you? How do you? How do you measure? The gravitational effects of you can't measure it. There's no device they hold up and say, "Okay, yeah, the moon's pulling in 7.39." Oh, <laughs> didn't work that way. It's you see it. Mm -hmm. right. It's observational. It's an observational science. It's not mathematical. <laughs> it is mathematical because we use mathematics to surmise points in space and time. But it's you're looking at what you're measuring. You're not measuring arbitrary space except for Rahu and K2. And even they're not really yeah. arbitrary. So, <clears throat> right, it's a visual science. Um, but the outer planets, they did they didn't they didn't know about them. Right? Um, there's a gentleman, a gentleman by a guy by the name of Veda Vyasa. He's actually the author of one of the famous um, probably the well, one of the famous, there's a couple of them. The Mahabharata, right? He's the author, Veda Vyasa. And he mentions there's there's three celestial bodies that are outside of Saturn's influence. He mentions it in the Mahabharata. Mm -hmm. um, Mahabharata, for you all no, we don't know, is the Maha, right, is great. Uh, Baharata is the name that they usually actually call India. India is really not the original name. It's Baharasha or Baharatya. Yeah. So Maha means great. So the great, and it also talks about a great war, right? Um, but in that book comes the comes out of out of that book comes the Bhagavad Gita, which most people are familiar with, especially with Krishna, right? Krishna is a very yeah. popular, the Hari Krishna is the whole Krishna movement. Krishna himself is kind of um, popularized. So, <clears throat> right, that's what that. But the person that wrote the Mahabharata, right, knew and mentioned uh, these three. Ex the, the existence of these uh, three celestial bodies that were beyond uh, Saturn. Now, yeah, there's some con there's some more conjecture, and I say conjecture because we, you know, I, I can't verify it. I've heard right that they name the outer planets right. Um, uh, they have names for them. So uh, Prajapati is Uranus, the Great Father, right? Um, Varuna, right, is Neptune. Runa is the uh, god of the uh, the waters, right? In in uh, quote unquote the Hindu pantheon, and mm -hmm. then you have um, Pluto as Yama, right? The Lord of Death. So, right, all these things considering, I mean, okay, I I could buy it. Like you know, I'm not, it's not something I wouldn't necessarily say is correct, but you know, you could do your research and see if you come up with resources that can stand alone. To say that that is correct, but this is what is said that they were called uh, from the Vedic or from the um, uh, Indian perspective. Now, here's how they work, right? So, in mundane astrology, they're very easy to read because we're meeting mass things, big things like Pluto going into Capricorn, right? We mentioned that earlier this year and, and the effects uh, from that transit. So, yeah. those are easily seen. On the macrocosmic level, but on the microcosmic level, it's very hard to detect, right? I mean, you have to have a really watchful, keen eye, and really kind of see and measure if there's something that you can gauge from um, the, these planets doing what they do. Now, let me say this: when a planet changes from sign to sign, even in the even in the nail sense, you you may get some residual effect from it. Not in a big sense, but just something you might notice small. Right, not something that may even happen, and it the next day it, it's it's not even it's like it wasn't even there, right? Um, on a mass scale, no. On a on a micro scale, right? It's hard to detect, um, and this is because those perturbations, right? Those perturbations are affecting the outer planet. Well, the outer planets are affecting like Saturn, Jupiter, and so forth. So we're getting the result of it all the way through these other planets. So it's lessened, yeah. it's deadened, right? The other planets buffer it in a, in a way. But they're still there, right? And so 
how do we use them? We use them very surgically and very precisely. We don't just go buck ham talking about, well, the moon is conjunct Neptune and it doesn't work that way, right? Um, think about it like this, right? You know, you can't you play with a magnifying glass, right? You burn a few things, I'm sure, right? <laughs> Most of us have yeah. as kids, right? <laughs> I did, right? Yeah. <laughs> right? Burn a few ants, sorry, ants. Didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Three nineties, yeah, kids. right. <laughs> right, Had a little ball with the magnifying glass, but nonetheless, right? Yeah, that magnifying glass kind of represents how um, light, which is what we're studying, Jyotish means the study of light works. And so, if it's not concentrated enough, right, it really doesn't have that kind of enlightening or shifting effect. So it's it's, it's dim. It's it's not as as, as as focused. So you know, the moon and the inner planets, like they 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 have to kind of have a specific dead on lineup, if that makes sense. Right, like yeah. they have to be like locked in to one another. There can't be any wiggle room, not much. And there's different wiggle. There's each planet has a different amount of wiggle room in that regard. So Uranus, let's talk about Uranus a little bit, right? Uranus, right? He's it, it's a planet that represents change, right? Really, for the most part, it represents represents things that are. Um, unorthodox, innovative, um, um, outside of the, the 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 norm. It definitely is some is a planet that talks about, in the sense of <clears throat> things that are revolutionary, um, things that are not expected, right? And so we look for Rahu and K to do, do to do that for the most part, and they do, right? They just do. The eighth Lord can do that too, right? The Lord of the eighth mm -hmm. house can do that too right? so but as a planet it talks about change right and so when we look at it and to understand how we apply these planets is very surgically so let, let's use a slide rule here because Uranus is actually it really is closer right and remember it has an 84 degree um, solar return cycle so if that's the case, Uranus can affect things a little bit easier in the sense of the outer planets. Um, you're going to notice more when these, these specific placements are done surgically, meaning that when you can see them and they're surgical and they're clean, they're tight, you're going to see the effects. Not in a major way, in a subtle way. Right. In a... Um, Kind of, you have to take notice way. You got to look deeper way. You got to listen way, not overt, subtle, right? But first of all, when these, when, and let me make sure I clear, make this clear. Uranus has about a, a two, maybe three degree orb or difference between where Uranus would be placed and the planet would be placed. Maybe. I'm going to say two degrees, maybe three. Anything outside of that, there's no effect at all. Because remember that that laser-like uh, influence has to be there. So the moon has to have that where it's just boom. It's, it lines up perfectly. The sun lines up. It has to, first of all, let me make sure I say this. It has to be personal planets here. Just because Venus is with... Uranus does not mean you're going to get the effect. Unless there's there is a rule, exception to the rule. We'll talk about that. But, first of all, Uranus has a 2 degree, maybe 3 degree orb to affect things. Maybe. Neptune, even less. Right? Neptune has 1 degree to 2 degree orb. And I say, maybe 2 degrees. Pluto has to be dead on. It can't be even a less than a degree away. And it has to be a personal planet. Does it make sense? Yeah. Yeah, it does. It does. So, let's see. <clears throat> 
when you now talk about not only these degrees, looking at what planets you can use to exact a meaning of some sort from the placement, because it's going to be, you're reaching. A lot of times, astrologers in the West, and there's no disrespect, a lot of good astrologers, but for the most part, they reach. Yeah, I mean, part of that is because it's, I mean, people, the average, you know, person is not, doesn't take astrology that serious anyway, so... No, you, get, you can. I think when you when you're used to talking about it that way, half the people you're talking to don't know what you talk about anyway. Mm-hmm. You, you start taking liberties. <laughs> yeah, you're right. So, you're right. Yeah. So <clears throat> they have to be personal planets, right? To, in order to be able to be a, a effect, it's personal planets meaning primarily number one, the moon. Because the moon is the mind. And it's a sensitive planet. So any type of imbibing energies come up over it. Provided they're within that degree. Course of degrees that I gave. You're going to get an effect. Right. The mother will be affected. You'll you'll notice the mother will be innovative. If it's your conjunct Uranus. Right. The mother will be dreamy. If it's conjunct Pluto. I mean uh, Neptune. If it's mm-hmm. conjunct Pluto, the mother may be even to the point of being extremely intense or overbearingly a mother, right? Doesn't mean the, the mother won't be there. It just means the mother's character and nature will change. It will be colored differently because those planets yeah. don't typically remove things. They just modify. That's another thing to keep in mind because these planets don't naturally necessarily rule any, any signs. They say they do. Right, because they, they say that Uranus obviously they will say it rules Aquarius. They say that Neptune rules Pisces, and they say Pluto rules Co rules Scorpio, and these are all Co rulers, mind you. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't work, right? Because the planets and the, the signs themselves, the planets, they have a male and female expression, except the sun and moon. Well, if you start using the other planets, then you remove the male and female expression. And that's yeah. part of how we understand the um, the way the science work in, works in a very um, computerized, kind of closed network circle. You don't need, when you start adding more, when you change the dynamic of the structure of it, then you lose right the knowledge that was intended. So... Well- and they don't rule days either, I mean. No, it doesn't rule any days. And you can't fit it in the scheme of things like that. So that's why it's beyond, right? That materialistic type of, um, that part of reality. It's not going to, you need to be beyond it to really realize it and master it. Now, Uranus, right, once he's conjunct the moon, you're going to, you'll feel it. If you, if it's you yourself, you'll feel it. You'll feel a little rebellious, maybe. I'm not going to go with the status quo. I can never be a, a normal guy. You know, you're going to feel it. It's going to be there if it's within that, I'm going to say two degrees, maybe three. Right? If you see it zero degree, like this, just right on top of each other, you you're, you can pretty much read a subtle influence through it. So do you, you attract women that kind of have these kind of outlandish, kind of all of a sudden, yeah, they're going to have that. They're going to, yeah, I do notice that. Not overt, though. Right. Yeah. Not overt. So the sun, right? You know, it's the person's drive and ambition, right? Kind of has highs and lows. Aquarius can do this. It has these spurts, right? So their 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 energy, right, can be everywhere. I mean, mm-hmm. meaning they themselves, their focus. I don't want to say energy. Their focus. They can be very. Very intelligent, though. These are scientists, kind of people that are outside the box thinkers, in, innovators, right? Um, right. That's that's those guys, right? Those people, rather. Fathers a little quirky, though. Not overtly. Not gonna walk in and see a whole bunch. Now, Rahu or K two being conjunct the sun, yeah, you're gonna see a whole lot of crazy with daddy, right? Mm-hmm. But or a lot of strangeness with that. I mean, not crazy, but 
uh, other than that, you know, you're not going to see much. I mean, Pluto there. Let's say, let's talk about. Let's go back. Let's go in order. So Neptune. Let's go Uranus and Nep. I mean, Uranus and Moon, right? Obviously, the mind is going to be thinking outside the box. The person is going to have a relationship with women that may be estranged, a little different, um, kind of like maybe even polygynous sometimes, maybe because Uranus can do strange stuff like that because they're dealing with women from that perspective, and they have been since they were a child because they had a mother that facilitated some of those backdrop quirky, weird, unexpected things. Right. Neptune, right, conjunct the moon. Now we're talking about somebody, a mother, or the person can be dreamy, out there, not grounded, right? Um, very creative, though. Very much into the arts. Very much into um, uh, imagining things, right? Making things up, right? They cannot, maybe a lot of times they be delusional, emotionally, especially. But not to the point where it's going to be, again, overboard just noticing hey you know sometimes you can go there yeah i can sometimes All right mm -hmm. now again rahu and k2 take the cake because they do all the rest of the magic that <laughs> creates schizophrenia psychosis and all the other things neptune doesn't do that All right and then pluto conjunct the moon now we're talking about an intense mother Mother that doesn't stop. Mother that has to concern herself with every detail of what you do, right? But also can let go and detach too, right? Yeah. Well, like, right, you go ahead, burn, get burned. Right? And these are exacerbated, gets further more by the placements and houses and all that. So all these things matter. But just to understand that these planets have to be used surgically and delicately and with a keen eye. Because you start reading stuff like you really are getting something out, of, and it's it's not what you're reading. You're you you're you're imposing on it. On your that's what we call it. You're imposing on the reading. Most you I will not impose. I try not to impose. It's sometimes difficult because you know something and you're talking and you kind of lead. But the a good astrologer will not lead. He'll let he'll basically tell you the information, and it'll it'll drop. He'll tell it to you, and you're like, yep, that's it. Didn't have to lead you. So, <clears throat> the sun does the same thing, just in a different way, right? Now we're talking about the person's core uh, identity, right? Meaning where they where they think they're headed, where they see themselves, right? In the sense of who they are, going where they're going, right? What they, where, how they shine, where they shine, where they're gonna lead, because the sun is all about leading, right? So it's leading you too to a destination, to a point, to a realization, to light, right, to awareness. It happens over time, right, but you'll find that the sun being there, let's say, for example, like I said with Uranus, innovative thinker, person's energy can be very different, right, they feel different, like, hey, they, sh they project in a very, uh, not status quo way. They come from a perspective that maybe uh, they're, they play devil's advocate a lot. They can do that. Right? Mm. Um, so moving into Neptune, right? Now this person, right? Their core, right, is more spiritualized. The core is more focused on higher teachings, esoteric knowledge, right? Um, things that will cause you to want to leave the planet, UFOs, all that kind of stuff. The sun, and I'm talking about tight orb, one degree, possibly two. That's very, that's very narrow, right? That means you really have to, it has to be conjunct, is what we, is what we call it. it. It has to, like in other words, in astrology, especially in uh, Vedic astrology, you find that a planet is, might be 10 degrees away, it's still conjunct. It might be 20 degrees away from another planet in the same sign, same house, it's conjunct. That's how it's looked upon from that, in that system. So it doesn't matter, it could be, as long as it's in the same house, it's conjunct. But in Western astrology, and we use the orbs from Western astrology and, and take them up because they do work, meaning the degrees in difference, the difference in degrees. If they are in that little small, narrow window of influence, it's going to be noticeable. It's going to be palatable. It's going to be, you're going to sense it. Yeah. Right. But you have to sense it. It's not seen. 
Does it mm. make sense? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you'll sense it. You will sense it. You're like, yep, I sense that about him. You won't say it when you see him across the street. You'll say it when you have a conversation. You'll say it when you have an intimate, relatable idea. You'll say it when, oh, you know, something came out and maybe the person's been recognized for something. You'll see it then. But it's subtle. Mm. So, moving in, right? So, sun and moon always. And the moon, I'm sorry, excuse me, sun conjunct um, Neptune, again, very spiritual person. Very spiritual. To the point where they really don't need a whole lot of religion. They, their religions, they have pretty much, they kind of go in every religion. That's what Neptune can do, conjunct sun within a tight degree. Pluto, right, can create, and, and, and even with dad, right, yes, sometimes it can be dad um, likes to get away. Dad, you know, maybe drunk a little bit. Dad, you know, had some 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 kind of quirky back end stuff that we hid, and now we find that he's into um, um, Star Trek or something. You know, something like yeah. that. But not overt. Like dad came in drunk, you know, it's subtle. If it's a very tight degree, it can become overt if there's other placements involved, right? If it's in the ascendant, yeah. right, mm -hmm. primarily. But what we look for in these planets is sun and moon, right? And I mean, Pluto conjunct sun just means that the person has an intense desire for life, an intense focus for life, a life that is rec recognizably understood it this is not permanent so they literally take on things and they live life to the fullest a lot of times sun conjunct pluto because mm. they recognize Tough. the soul is here to experience life <laughs> right yeah so they get intense they have a lot of power but then they can misuse that power and again this is subtle right so the other things that we look for are particular positions. So, the outer planets in the ascendant can have some bearings. Some bearings. Not much. Um, the physiology may take some different shapes slightly. Not much. Um, unless it is actually at the degree of the ascendant meaning the ascendant degree if it's at that specific I'm talking about that degree not around it not near it on it you will notice that the body will have the physiology the in, the innate re uh, responses will have a lot of the influences of that planet right so if it's Pluto the person might be shorter you'll notice just tightly it's just maybe you notice dad and mom are taller just, 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 I mean, I'm talking about just barely. Oh, yeah, you're a little shorter. Not notice, be like, oh, my God, he's a midget. <laughs> right? Or he, he's a little person, rather, right? So, you know I mean, that's how, and then the 10th house, right? 10th house, I'm talking about midheaven degree. Midheaven. Conjunct your midheaven? Yeah. Yep, yeah, you're going to notice it. It's going to be there. Right? But the other planets will serve to override those things in a much more magnanimous way, and then it becomes subtle. Because remember, these other planets are going to go away. The tenth house is not going to change its nature and normal operation of business as it would without the planet being there. If it's there, because it's not, it doesn't have any rulership, as we discussed, right? So it's just going to be yeah. in effect, right? So the tenth now, the ascendant lord is where we have those exceptions. So let's say if your Taurus ascendant and Venus is your Venus is obviously your ascendant Lord, and let's say Venus is within the degree, not orbs, not different within the degree of that planet, then yeah, you can notice some. There's going to be some uh, some 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 things that would happen with regards to say for Neptune, the Taurus might definitely the Taurus might put on a little maybe a little bit thicker, just slightly, right? The eyes might, the, the color, the tone of the skin might change slightly just because it's a slight change. The personality will have some of these traits, right? Because the Ascendant Lord rules the personality. 
gen well, one aspect of the personality because it's more than one aspect, but for the most part, right? So, yeah. you know, we use them in that way. And again, these have to be tight. They cannot be seven degrees apart, five degrees apart, and then we start wishing and hoping. Because I can guarantee you, if I read the chart, it's not going to read the same. And you're going to see, oh, now, I yeah, it's not there. It's not overt. So, you know, there's a reason why we use them in, a, in this way. Now, mundane-wise, you can go crazy with the planets, the outer planets. You can, I mean, you can just start talking because they're going to yield something, right? But in the, that's, that's, that's the only place you can do that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. In natal astrology, it, these planets are um, a fine tooth comb. Right, that's what it is. These planets are fine tooth combs, which you just taken over. Yep, I, 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 I can. There's, there's some of that's in there. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's there too. Right, but a fine tooth comb, you can't comb through and start rolling. Right, you got to be careful. Right. Yeah. You have to be mindful. Yeah. You have to be precise. You have to be intentful. Right. You have to be. Um, you have to have researched enough charts to show how it looks when those subtle things are there. And when they become overt, what would be the specific degree that it's at? And then there's other ramifications because that degree holds other things as well. So that's why we use them in a very minimal way. Because, again, if, if we have all these other things that we use, this just really becomes, like I said... This is a refining point. And so that's how they're used. They're not a bludgeon tool, right? They're more like, um, you know, dental floss. <laughs> you know, if you will. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Speak, speaking to that, um, you know, um, I noticed in the uh, the United States chart, um, so Pluto, Pluto has gone retrograde. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, retrograde party up in there right now. <laughs> yeah, it, but it's going, it's going, it's going to fall back into Sag for a little bit until about October. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering, you know, what's your thoughts on that? As far as on the economy, you think, you know, that'll be like a mm -hmm. a, a flash of us going back to mm -hmm. you know thinking what it is, and then it really once it goes back to wreck and it goes back, you know, into cap. You know, we really see the true transition or, or those those signs will really become more prevalent like right now mm -hmm. it's kind of like almost an illusion of things going back it to is how it, they were that's all these retrogrades that's mm -hmm. all that's that's what these and i mean pluto going retrograde that perturbation process i'm sure residually boom, 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 boom. you know like mm -hmm. all those retrogrades that's mo that's, that's 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 serious like you said going back but I think Pluto, what it will do is, um, it is I, I don't, I don't foresee it mundane wise being very helpful. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. Mm -hmm. no. You want for, you want Pluto to just keep going. Yeah. Just, 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 just keep going. Because <laughs> when it goes back, it's like implosion, right? Well, so, we see it. I mean, stuff is, is you know, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's yeah. Right. It's interesting out there right now. Right. I mean, it's, the coronavirus is not the only reason you probably should be chilling at the house for the most part, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, because it's all it's all types of little things, you know, jumping off. Yeah, yeah. And so mm -hmm. that implosion, right, with this seemingly normal, the seeming fake normal, you can feel like it's, it doesn't even feel it's, right. No. That, that, <laughs> it's like, like, you're at the store, you're like, like, am I really... This is how, uh, because you're knowing that internally something's shifting to go forward again. You can feel it. Like when you start paying attention to astrology, it's not like you don't feel the planets. They're there, right? It's just, you don't pay attention, right? But when you start, you start feeling it. Like, yep, oh, this is a Venus retrograde. Uh-huh, I got it. So, when Pluto gets back into the ascendant, <laughs> As it moves back in that slingshot effect, you said what date? Remind the people of what date it is. 
well when it goes back direct mm-hmm. or when is it or when it actually goes into um what when it actually Sag. goes into Sag. uh july um oh, i mean i'm sorry no that's when it comes when it goes direct it's in october uh, october. october yep so now again you're adding and it's beautifully done the way you've done it you've added to the last show that we talked about when mm-hmm. the, remember we talked about just the last show <laughs> when September comes yeah. and October comes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't realize that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's that's. It. <laughs> I'm just like you. I see. I'm just like all I do is I'm the finger to the moon, right? <laughs> that's all I look. Look, there it is. That's it. That's all. I, I'm just the finger, right? So yeah, right. You just basically said exactly. Further influencing Pluto moving from that first house to the second. Right? Yeah. That sudden, all of a sudden, what happened? And and I'm telling y'all, you just <laughs> buckle up. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's not going to just all of a sudden, yeah, it's nice now. No. It might be nice weather, but it won't. It's not going to work that way. This has to play itself out. These planets have to come all the way out of this pole, this whole retrograde cycle and then move into a whole nother position next year. So I'm talking about June, July of next year before we see some type of normalcy. So yeah. that's what I say, buckle up. If people were smart, this would be the summer of complete just like the outdoor summer where you don't you know you're not in stores you're not you know it's just this would be the this should be the year of that like this nothing we try to pull back the as year, much as possible the year of the retreat the retreat <laughs> just, and then next just, year when we're out of it and we look back and these things are bleeps on the radar screen you got one or two cases my pop-up they trace it and it's controlled and it gets to the point where it literally is co- a constant watch and it can reduce that way but the America is a Sagittarian rule country. It's Sagittarius. It's Jupiter. It's expansion. It's it must be Sagittarius loves fun. Travel. Yeah. Parties. <laughs> that, that's nice things. Yeah. Jovial <laughs> events. That's Jupiter. Grow, 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 grow. All right. And then all of a sudden you're growing so much, huh? Well, you grew too much. Now the virus is growing with you. And you're going to ride it out until you learn how to control your growth. Until you learn how to control resources, control people. I mean, it's it's, it's going to have to be that way until other phases of things kick in. It's not, it, normal is not going to be here for a long time. The real normal. I'm talking about the normal normal. Like we had last year. That's pretty yeah. much gone. <laughs> so, <clears throat> consider. Well, and you, go ahead. Here's the thing, too, right? As soon so it goes, it it, it that retrograde it goes back into Sag on the fourth of July. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday to you! No. <laughs> Hold on, you know what else is happening that day too, right? Uh. Uh-uh. Uh, lunar well not that oh, day that's the, the day after that the other day yeah the day but after I'm saying, but, like after, but I'm saying right there yeah the I'm lunar saying, eclipse yep I'm saying like <laughs> right there happy birthday I'm telling you watch watch it's coming I, I would say do not go to any 4th of July oh do not do that city. that would be no would not be wise to do that don't go to DC I'm I, <laughs> like seriously like any event right now <laughs> just yeah. suspect to me personally like, nah, I'm good I'm alright you know what I mean I'll wait but you know what I mean hey, if you have to just be careful and don't try to try to avoid it if possible I mean if you're working there and you're doing you know things that you have to do in that environment just be very very mindful and make sure you have an escape route <laughs> yeah I mean, so you can avoid any kind of potential issues but um Definitely, you know, research the other planets in regards to um, uh, Joe Tisha's concern because it's really not much out there. 
but what you do find is that you'll find people like myself, astrologers like myself, that use it um, in a very specific way. And there's different ones of different people. And you do have some of them that use it in a Western way. And if you find it works and it does what it's supposed to do, do what works for you, by all means. We just ask that you research it and take it into consideration and prove it, right? Show and prove, right? Because, again, this is an observation of science. Yeah. Um, but that, though, I think... I think we've gotten pretty good into the outer planets. I'm not going to turn it into a very specific, like, how to use it on a predictive level, right? But just at a, to analyze it from a mundane, from a NATO level, um, you definitely can use it in those ways and, um, and try to kind of, um, like I said, uh, extract the essence out of what's being said and, and use it um, in a way that gives you a, a deeper meaning and more depth. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Um, so, yeah, you know, I want to remind you all that this episode was brought to you by Push It Forward Media Group, um, Calaprusha Astrology, and our patrons over at Patreon. I um, want to thank you all again for that support over there. And um, if you want information on how to get linked up with the Patreon, um, just go, go to our Instagram, you know, at Cosmic Convo, C O S M I C C O N V O. And, um, you know, hit the link tree right there and, um, it's, uh, you'll see the Patreon link right there. All right. Um, so, uh, brother Rob, before we make a, make an exit, you got anything that you want to, uh, any lot, any parting words, anything you want to share with the people? Uh, not particularly, uh, just thankful for folks, uh, joining the class. It's a, got a nice set of people, um, it is actually about to be too late because once the second class starts, it's going to be very difficult to catch up from there because the information comes very rapidly. So, <clears throat> excuse, me, <coughs> excuse me, if you are interested and you want to participate, definitely let me know, um, but do it now because I do have to get out uh, the class materials to you. So, uh, please let me know so I can... I can at least rush order it to you if there is a such thing right now because, of course, the um, mailing system is a little different. But um, I would do my best to get it to you within the time frame so you have it for the actual class that you're going to be using it for. So let me know now. Again, uh, after Saturday, that is when the cutoff ensues. So if you're interested, get at me. But other than that, again, I appreciate all the new students. Uh, keep it coming. And... If you're interested enough, right, if you get enough people, we could pick a day of the week to do it, but you just have to have enough people in that class. So if you're interested, you know your friends are interested, family's interested, and you want to maybe even come together to get a class going, let me know. I definitely will uh, we'll look into it and see what we can do. But other than that, uh, bid every well, everyone uh, peace, be well, be safe, and until the next time. We're out. Peace. Peace.